Hello there, a warm welcome to the Emmanuel Church building on Dudley Drive for our service of morning worship uh, today, that's Sunday the 20th of December. Hello to you. Uh, if you are a member of the Emmanuel Church family and you're self-isolating at the moment or, or you can't make it into the church building, we miss you very much. This service uh, is uh, for you and uh, and we hope that you'll uh, enjoy and engage with it over the course of the next hour, whether you're watching on your computer, laptop, smartphone, TV, whatever it might be, or perhaps listening in on uh, our dedicated phone line uh, instead. Maybe uh, you're, you're in the, the, the Morden and Sutton area uh, and you're watching, listening in uh, just out of interest uh, because of what we do. Maybe you live further afield. Maybe you've got a, a link to a manual that goes back into the past, or maybe you're just interested to see what we're up to. Whoever you are, uh, a warm welcome to you, and it's great to be able to speak to you today. There are um, four candles uh, that are burning on our Advent wreath at the moment. And uh, Advent, of course, is the season that we're in right now. We're looking ahead to the Christmas season where we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus, but we're also remembering that one day, one day in, in the future, the Lord Jesus will come again. That's what Advent is all about. So I'm going to begin our time together by reading the words of the Advent Collect. If you're watching, you'll see them on the screen. Here they are. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're continuing in our series of things that we sing in carols, but just taking a bit of a, a longer, closer look at some of those lines we sing in carols. So far, we've uh, seen, haven't we, over the last few weeks, if you've been watching or, or listening in, that the Lord Jesus was God in the manger. And our first carol this morning has a line, Lo, within a manger lies, he who built the starry skies. Let's sing together. See you amid the winter snow. See amid the winter snow, born for us on earth below. See the gem the Lamb appears, promised from eternal years. Hail that ever-blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn. Sing through all Jerusalem, Christ is born in
going to spend a time together now saying sorry to God for the things we do that push him away. By our words and actions and thoughts we deny who he is. So it's right that as a church family we come together and confess our sins before God. You'll see some words on the screen if you're watching at home. Please would you join in with the words in the bold yellow type. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here are some words from Titus chapter 3, Paul writing to Titus, and he writes this. When the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. We ask God for mercy. He's given us mercy in Jesus. And twice we've just seen that Jesus is our Saviour. That's how he's described by Paul. He saves us from where our sins lead us. He saves us to live a life uh, that is holy and honouring to God while we wait for the return of the Lord Jesus again one day. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, this Sunday in uh, the weeks of Advent is the Sunday when the church traditionally remembers Mary. And as we read about Mary in Luke's gospel particularly, we see her example of humble obedience. We're going to be uh, thinking about uh, this passage from Luke's gospel uh, that's coming up in just a moment later in our service today, in, in which the, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary but the sermon today is not about Mary. It's about the baby that grew inside her. Because the aim of uh, these sermons in December is to draw our gaze to the Lord Jesus, that we might be thrilled by him this Christmas. So with that in mind, let's have our first reading now from Luke chapter 1. Here it is. The first reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this, his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Reggie's joined me up here on uh, the balcony. Hello, Reggie. We missed you last week. I was recording the Zoom nativity. Yes, uh, you were getting ready for that, weren't you? And uh, the results of that will be ready to see this afternoon at three o'clock. There'll be a premiere on our YouTube channel and it will be there after that. Good, that isn't it? Yeah, you can pass it on to friends, family, uh, people you know uh, once uh, it's up there. Three o'clock is when it goes live and it'll be there, be there after that, won't it? It certainly will. Well, uh, it's getting closer to the big day, Reggie, isn't it? Uh, four candles are lit on the Advent wreath and uh, we've just heard that reading about Gabriel appearing uh, to Mary there, haven't we? And um, do you know uh, how Mary responded when she saw the angel for the first time. Was she concerned that she'd not got dressed up specially for the occasion? No, no, that, that's not right. Did she ask him to move his wings so they didn't bump into her? No, no, I think you know the answer to this. Don't you? Were you listening just then when we had the reading? I really was. Mary was afraid and alarmed. Yes, you're right. There we go. I thought he was listening. He was just having this on. Um, that's right. Mary was really scared when she saw the angel for the first time. And um, do you know, that, that is the case when people see angels in the Bible. They are really quite scared and alarmed because an angel is a messenger from God. An angel didn't come along every day. And so it was really quite a scary thing for Mary. But we've got a song about that now, a new song. Uh, it's one by David Heathwhite, our team rector, and it's called I'm an Angel Ooh. What's that at the end? No, I'm an Angel Ooh. What's with the Ooh? Well, you'll see as we sing the song now. Okay, uh, have a listen to this. It's a great song. I'm an Angel Ooh about angels that appear in the Bible. And it's a really Christmassy one. Shall we listen to it? I think we'd better. Here we go.
I'm going to pray. Let's pray together. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we might see wonderful things in your word to us this morning. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Sheila's got our second reading uh, from Hebrews in the New Testament. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I guess that Christmas 2020 uh, will look quite different for many of us. Because of the pandemic, we might need to make some changes to the things we normally do at this time of year. And maybe you're having to choose between the things that can't possibly be left out at Christmas and the things that go by the wayside. We had to make that choice with a Christmas tree here in the Emmanuel Church building, of course. We'd normally have it back there. It's nice to have a tree, but for the cost involved and the trouble of getting it all in place whilst maintaining social distancing, it was a step too far. It wasn't essential this year. Now, the virgin birth, is that an essential part of Christmas? There have been people who have always raised an eyebrow. They say, is it strictly necessary to insist that God caused Mary to be pregnant with his son and that a miracle birth took place? Or, or might it just have been an accidental baby or a grand story that came into being sometime afterwards in the church? Something we don't have to take too seriously when it comes to celebrating Christmas. In the carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, there's a line that says that Jesus was the offspring of a virgin's womb. We sing it, but does it matter whether that's truth or just a story? Well, you know what I'm going to say. Yes, it does matter. This morning, we'll see why the virgin birth really matters. Now, we've already heard in previous weeks that Jesus was there before the beginning of the world. In fact, that he's always been there. He is eternally begotten. But at the same time, there was a time when he was born in time and space and Mary was his mother. When he was born, as we heard last week, he gave up his divine privileges and as a part of that, he added a human nature to his divine nature. And a baby began to grow inside Mary who was God in human form. Not God pretending to be a baby, but a real living and breathing and crying baby boy. Now, how did that happen? Our gospel writers make it clear that Mary becomes pregnant by the work of the Holy Spirit, not because of Joseph. He is engaged to be married, uh, to, be married to Mary, but realises that she is pregnant and that he is not the father. He is told by an angel that what is conceived in her 
is from the Holy Spirit. Matthew tells us about that in his gospel. Separately, Luke tells us that the angel who appeared to Mary uh, said this to her, as we've already heard this morning, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So it's a miracle. It's not as if this happened every day in Galilee. And it's important that we recognize this as a miracle of the very greatest kind, because, yes, a lot of important stuff hangs on it. We decided to pass on getting that tree for Emmanuel this year. I imagine that there are reasons that you and I might come to the same conclusion about a tree for our own homes. After all, we might think a tree just sits in the corner gathering dust and shedding needles, and it's such a pain to set it up. But then as the days tick down towards Christmas Day, you realise, hold on, I've got a box full of tinsel and baubles and fancy lights and nothing to hang them on. Well, it's like that with a virgin birth. It really is quite crucial. There is a lot that hangs on it at Christmas. In fact, the truth of the virgin birth adds up to a very happy Christmas indeed. So, because Mary had a baby by the Holy Spirit, we can be sure that, firstly, Jesus is fully man and fully God. Now, this might feel like a repeat program in the Christmas schedules. I know what you're thinking. We've had this every Sunday in December so far. Jesus is fully man and fully God. But it's absolutely key for our understanding of who Jesus is. He's got to be both man and God. As we've heard, if he were not a man, he wouldn't be our brother, our champion in any real sense. But if he were not God, he could not have paid the price for our sin and he could not give us eternal life. Let's just spend a moment thinking about what God might have done instead of causing Mary to, be, to become the mother of the baby Jesus. Because he's God, Perhaps he could have made a perfect human being in heaven and whisked him down to earth without needing to go through the business of being born as a baby. But that would be awkward, wouldn't it? Because how would we know that Jesus was indeed fully human if he had never been born? It would be difficult to say that he was a bona fide card-carrying member of the human race, one of the offspring of Adam, because, well, nobody would have seen that with their own eyes. He would really be like an alien visitor dropping in on earth. Perhaps God could have gone an another way. Uh, perhaps Joseph and Mary could have got married and then had a baby, and then God could have bolted on a divine nature to Jesus at some point in the baby's life. But that's a bit like the idea of Jesus being adopted by God that we came across a fortnight ago, isn't it? You know, the idea that, that Jesus was a normal child who became a man who was somehow zapped at some stage, maybe at his baptism, and made special. And that leaves us with another problem. We're left wondering, how can Jesus be fully God if he was merely a man for some of his life? So God didn't do either of those things. Instead, he brought about a beautiful combination of the divine and the human. Humanly speaking, Jesus grew inside Mary and came to full term and was born as a kicking and crying infant, no doubt about that. But the infant had a divine nature as well as his human nature due to the fact that God brought about the conception of the child by the work of his Holy Spirit. We might say that for Jesus being fully God and fully man, the virgin birth is win-win. That's not to say that God couldn't have done it some other way, but it is to say that God chose to do it this way. He planted male gametes in, in Mary's womb to fuse with the female gametes and to bring about the wonder that is a little baby, that is the virgin birth. And as a result of it, Jesus is utterly consistent with who the Bible 
says he is, no less than fully God and no less than fully man. It's worth stepping back and taking a quick glance at God's form in this whole area. At key points in the the history of salvation in the Bible, God has given a child to childless couples in unpromising circumstances. Let's start with Abraham and Sarah. They were in their 90s when God gave them a son, just as he had promised, but against all odds. There's Manoah and his wife, who thought they could not have a child, but God gave them Samson. Ruth and Boaz have a son. Naomi is saved from a life of obscurity only because God made it so. Hannah was unable to conceive for so long, was on the receiving end of all those jokes from her husband's other wife, but eventually she gave birth to a son, Samuel. And of course, there's Elizabeth, who, as the angel said to Mary, was unable to conceive, but she and Zechariah were looking forward to the birth of John the Baptist. Now, in all these cases, God made it possible for a couple to have a child when previously that looked doubtful. But in the case of Mary, he goes one better. He creates a child inside the mother without the agency of the father. Throughout the history of the Bible, then, God is certainly in the business of providing miracle babies, but this one tops the lot. He is a baby from heaven, fully man and fully God. There's more. Because Mary had a baby by the Holy Spirit, we can be sure that, number two, Jesus is not a sinful man. The lack of a human father means that Jesus could not have inherited a corrupt, sinful nature from Joseph. Instead, as we've already seen, Gabriel told Mary that the Holy Spirit was responsible for the conception of Jesus, who would be called the Holy One. Jesus would be the same as every other human being in that he was fully human, but different to every other human being in that he was holy through and through. But that still leaves a problem. Why didn't Mary pass on her sinful nature to Jesus? After all, there's nothing in the Bible to say that original sin is only passed through the male line. We know that men and women, boys and girls equally, we're all sinners. We're all members of Adam's family. We're all a chip off the old block. So if that's the case, then surely Mary should have passed on her sinfulness to her baby. Well, various solutions have been presented by the church down through the years. One is that Mary was instantly made clean of her sins when Gabriel visited her and said to her that the Lord is with you. But if that's happening, Luke doesn't say that that's happening in his account, so it can only be speculation. Another uh, possible solution is that Mary herself was sinless. And that seems to solve one problem, but creates another, doesn't it? How can Mary have been sinless? So the Roman Catholic Church teaches the Immaculate Conception. That's not Jesus's conception, but Mary's conception inside the womb of her mum. Now, there's no basis in the Bible for teaching that, nor for the Roman Catholic idea that Mary remained a virgin for all of her life. That is a very hard teaching to defend because Mary pops up again in the Gospels with Jesus's brothers, her subsequent children. And we saw that in growth groups earlier uh, this autumn in Matthew chapter 12. So the problem with making these claims about Mary is that they go beyond what we know about her from the Bible and even contradict what the Bible says. Mary was very honoured to have been given the role of mother uh, to Jesus Christ, but she was as sinful as the next person and just as much in need of salvation as all of us. I know that there's a tendency to turn a blind eye to that from our point of view um, as Anglicans, that idea um, that some say that, that, that Mary was, was pure, was sinless. But there is a 
very big danger there, a danger that gives Mary too much attention and strips attention away from Jesus. There's no reason and need to believe that Mary was anything other than a sinner in need of grace at her every step. She was an obedient servant of the Lord, but she was still sinful. We've no good reason from the words of the Bible to think otherwise. So it's better to assume that the Holy Spirit kept sin from being transmitted from Mary to her baby boy. Maybe this is what Gabriel meant when he said that the, the Holy Spirit would, would come upon Mary. It's not that the Holy Spirit washed Mary clean from this time onward, but that in a remarkable way he prevented Mary's sin being passed on to the boy. He's still a flesh and blood human being, but without sin. Now, just hold on a moment, some people might say. If Jesus was sinless, how can we be sure that he was fully human? And the answer to that lies in being really clear that Jesus did have a normal human nature. He didn't sail above the struggles of life. We've heard from Hebrews already this morning. The writer of Hebrews says about Jesus, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. You see, Jesus was not immune to the difficulties of life. As another carol gets us to sing, tears and smiles like us he knew. That's true. The difference is that Jesus withstood temptations and went through the trials of life sinlessly. And none of us can ever claim to have done that. But none of us should be in any doubt that Jesus was properly a human being, engaging with those temptations to sin and struggling with the frustrations of a broken world. Be assured of that this Christmas. The virgin birth is yet more evidence that Jesus shared in our humanity. He knows what it's like. He took on human form. He's able to sympathise with you because of it. More than that, he is able to be your champion and saviour because of it. But there's one more thing left to say. Because Mary had a baby by the Holy Spirit, we can be sure that, thirdly, Jesus is God's gift to us. The work of the Holy Spirit was needed precisely because God's input was needed. We could not save ourselves from where our sins take us. We could not mend our own sinful hearts. We've seen that in Jeremiah over the last few months, haven't we? It needed God to step in and by his Holy Spirit at work inside Mary, that is exactly what he did. This is a wonderful, heartwarming thought. God always promised that the seed of a woman would be the one to crush Satan forever, but it needed him to provide that seed. We were not left to raise a champion of our own. If that had been the case, we would have been like the Israelite army, looking in desperation for someone to go out and face the giant Goliath who was standing there laughing at them every day. But uh, on that occasion, God provided a, a rather weedy-looking young man in the shape of David who went out in God's power and slayed the enemy. And all of that pointed forward to the first Christmas when God provided a rather unpromising baby in the shape of Jesus, who in the power of the Holy Spirit took on sin and death, our greatest enemies, and he won. And that baby was God himself. God stepped in to do what we could never do. Here's Paul writing in Galatians this time. He writes, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. You see, if Jesus had been a man born of two earthly parents, the question would have lingered, did Jesus really do enough to pay the price for our sin and to act as our substitute? But he was God's son, sent by God and born of a woman to give us the most amazing thing, adoption into God's family. 
Jesus wasn't a man who was adopted by God at some point in his life. Jesus was God, and through Jesus' obedience and sacrifice, God saw fit to adopt us into his family. Isn't that wonderful news this Christmas? Jesus is God's gift to us at Christmas and always. So we've seen how much hangs on the virgin birth. It isn't an optional extra to believe. In fact, what we think of the virgin birth says quite a lot about whether we think the Bible is truthful. The God who flung stars into space must surely be capable of producing a miracle baby inside Mary. So if we say, well, it's impossible, that's revealing quite a lot about what we think of the God of the Bible. And maybe this Christmas, that's something for you to ponder. It is not some very small, weak God who is demanding your attention, but the God who made this world. And the virgin birth shows what lengths he has taken to make it possible for us to love him and be loved by him. Jesus really was the offspring of a virgin's womb. So what difference will that make to you and to me this Christmas? Well, it, it is wonderful to know that we have a promise-keeping God. Jesus' birth at Bethlehem fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament. Mary's boy was the snake crusher that the world had been waiting for, an even greater king than David. But don't just marvel at how God has arranged things. Marvel at how God arranged things for our assurance. Because God himself became a very small baby, born of Mary. Because he did that, we can be sure that he is good enough and God enough to deal with our greatest problem, the problem of our sin. No one but the saviour who is fully man and fully God, the saviour who is sinless, and the saviour entering the world on God's initiative could deal with that. But we have exactly that saviour. And so it is a very happy Christmas indeed. As we finish, I'm going to say a prayer now that the Church of England suggests for use at Christmas time. Let's pray. All praise to you, almighty God and heavenly King, who sent your Son into the world to take our nature upon him and to be born of a virgin. Grant that as we are born again in him, so he may continually dwell in us and reign on earth as he reigns in heaven, now and forever. Amen. Chance for us now to listen to and sing along to uh, that new carol that we heard for the first time a couple of weeks ago, Maker Made a Child, by the musicians uh, at EMU who've made this lyric video available for churches to use over uh, the Advent and Christmas period. Very grateful to them for that. It's a wonderful carol because it gets us to focus on who the Lord Jesus was and is, uh, that he is God lying there in the manger. Let's sing together now.
We're going to declare our faith together now using some words that you'll see on the screen if you're watching at home. Again, please would you respond with the words in the bold yellow type if you believe these things about God, about the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alison's going to lead us now in some prayers of intercession. We will start our prayers today with the collect for the fourth Sunday of Advent. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After each prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and please can you respond, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on the events and services being held by the churches in the parish this Christmas. We pray for those at Emmanuel, the driving carol service happening this evening, and the services on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We thank you that, even in Tier 3, church services are still being allowed to take place. We especially pray that the drive-in carol service would be a wonderful witness to the true meaning of Christmas and that all who come to the Christmas services will be blessed with the glorious news of the birth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our mission partner's focus for this week is on Joe and Rachel Clark in Portugal. Dear Lord, we start with a prayer for your healing touch on Joe's brother, who was rushed to hospital recently, and that you will be with the doctors deciding on the best course of treatment for him. We give thanks for the mission weeks that have taken place, with new rules meaning the logistics were challenging, but praising God that they were able to go ahead. We lift to you the situation regarding the study lounge, which is no longer available. We give thanks for the blessing of the study lounge over the years and pray for the provision of a better long-term place. Finally, we pray for your blessing on the Clark family and the Christmas events Joe and Rachel are involved in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift your compassionate love and tender care all those for whom this Christmas will be a difficult sad and lonely time especially those who have lost loved ones the pandemic has left people facing the effects of long-term illness and financial hardship with the fear of losing the roof over their heads we give thanks for all those reaching out to help in so many ways such as those running the food banks and night shelters and of course for the NHS and other key workers. We also give thanks for the arrival of the vaccine against Covid which gives light at the end of a dark tunnel. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Dear Lord Christmas this year is going to be different in so many ways because of Covid, but there will be no difference in the glorious message of the light of the world coming amongst us as a baby born in Bethlehem to be our wonderful Saviour. Thank you for the most amazing Christmas gift of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final carol this morning has this line, Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. But that same God was born and laid in a manger as a baby. Let's sing together now in the bleak midwinter.
come to the end of our uh, service this morning don't forget the zoom coffee break at midday and the login details for that are in the notice sheet as always at three o'clock this afternoon there's the premiere of our Emmanuel zoom nativity so you can watch along from three o'clock and after it's finished it'll be available there on our youtube channel over the christmas period you can pass it on the link to that uh, that video to, to friends family neighbors if you'd like to and it's our drive-in carol service, all being well, this evening at six o'clock. So if you're signed in for that in your car, don't forget to bring decorations for your car as you come along. I'll see you there. Right now, I'm going to uh, say a prayer, and you'll see the words on the screen. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to come among us in great humility... Open our eyes to look for his coming again. May God the Son give us grace to live in the light of his coming as Redeemer and Judge. And may God the Holy Spirit free us from sin, make us holy and bring us to eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.